Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. With this video, I wanted to go back in the time, 2011, when for the first time I visited Ukraine, and uh, I wanted to visit the exclusion zone of Chernobyl. That was actually the main reason why I decided to visit this country. Uh, I was also being fascinated for this event, this accident that occurred in this region at that time of USSR. And uh, there were at the time there were only two ways to travel to this place, uh, with a tour bus or with a private guide. The tour bus, of course, was cheaper, and it cost me at that time 150 euros. Uh, and it was a day trip from Kiev to Chernobyl and back on the same day, from Monday to evening, and uh, included the visit to the nuclear power plant and the city of Pripyat. Unfortunately, with this tour bus, there was not enough time because we were many people. To, to walk freely uh, in, the sea, uh, in the city of Pripyat and visit whatever you wanted. But still, I got a lot of uh, impression from that visit. And here you can see actually what happened. So we passed the first, uh, the second checkpoint and we are actually now in the city of Chernobyl. This is the monument for uh, liquidators. So you know that the people that lost their lives with the first uh, uh, approach to the accident and when the radiation was at the maximum soon after the explosion to put it in, uh, in safety. Uh, I was measuring uh, with my dagger counter uh, the radiation <laughs> of the air and here you can see that it's even less than the average in the world which is 0 0.2 here was 0 0.12 uh, so almost half, and that's the reason why um, many people still live in Chernobyl, still live in Chernobyl, because uh, the radiation there is, is actually not that high, even if you are like four kilometers far from the nuclear power plant. So many people still live there, and some other um, workers just go the back and forth to Kiev from and to Kiev every day. Even if you have for laws like a, a maximum days that you can live in the exclusion zone, no one else of course can live apart from the residents that were living there just before the accident. I decided to leave uh, the, um, the original comments that was in Italian because it was only for friends and, uh, and relatives. <coughs> just to give you the, the real feelings that I had and then the sounds that I had from my, once I was there. And here we are, we passed the last checkpoint, which means that now we are in the red zone, so no one can leave here because the radiation is too high. And it's in, in the air it's like 2.5, in this position, which is 600 meters from the nuclear power plant, you can see over there and only workers can come back and forth from this place because of course there's still a lot of work to do to make it to put it in security but actually the highest radiation is in the grass because it's absorbed most of the radiation of the air so you can see that it's more or less like five times more than the natural radiation uh, that you can measure in the air or in the concrete even unless they are very very close to the um, to the core of the nuclear power plant so I show you now uh, the radiation in the air and soon we will approach it. So here you can see uh, the so-called uh, red forest that was the place um, that absorbed most of the fallout of the radiation and all the trees dies very quickly. And here already in the air, because we are closer to the nuclear power plant or the fourth reactor, it's a lot stronger. And I, you can imagine that it's even stronger if you go there. Even now, all the trees are new. And here we are finally in front of the reactor number four. At that point, what you can see this, the other monument for liquidators is the closest point that we are allowed to stand in front of the reactor number four. More than that, we couldn't get closer. And here I'm measuring the radiation in the air, that is about three uh, meters sievert, so it's, uh, we can say like 15 times, 15 times the um, natural radiation. And it's just spread out from the fuse core of the reactor number four. Uh, we were um, obliged to wear long sleeves, uh, sleeves uh, and long trousers uh, for security, they say, because our skin is able to absorb radiation from the air. Though it depends actually from how much time are you exposed to those radiation. But anyway, it was, uh, it was our duty, we had to do that. 
so we had to cover like you see even if it was really really hot it was about 30 degrees even more the days so I was sweating a lot and here we are this is the closest point that we, we were allowed to stand in front of the reactor number four and here the radiation it's a little bit more because every meter we get uh, approach and this position to the reactor number four makes a difference you can see uh, the old sarcophagus here that was built uh, very quickly soon after the disaster but now it's ruined down so that's why I, uh, nowadays they built a new one that should be definitive or at least that should stay there for um, many many years because the problem won't be solved for our entire life it would be it would last long many many years after the disaster Included in the tour, there were even a lunch in the canteen of the nuclear power plant. And for the first time in my life, I hope it was not food miles. So quite funny situation. So here we are finally in the city of Pripyat and uh, this part, the amusement park, is the most famous uh, part of the city that you can actually see as a cover for many uh, documentaries or video games. And why? Just because this part of the city received the highest fallout of all the rest of the city. Even if the city it's uh, it's quite small because it was founded in 1970 just because of the um, nuclear power plant, and so a lot of people came here just just because they were working there, just because they were working the nuclear power plant. And actually, at that time, it was really cool because here was everything was clean, was new, and it was really nice to live here. Uh, but after the, the disaster, in three days it was evacuated because most of the fallout came here, apart the Red Forest, of course, uh, if we talk about an inhabited places. Uh, and now the forest is just taking place of the city because a lot of concrete is going to ruin down because of that. Nowadays, as far as I know, it's not possible to visit uh, with this type of uh, tour bus the city of Pripyat. You have to go with the expert guide because uh, a lot of uh, buildings are ruined down, so it's very dangerous now to, to approach this place. Uh, and, but on the other hand, uh, we didn't have enough time to explore the city just because it was a big group and we have like 40 minutes total to, in two times to get around the city freely. And, but it was also very, very interesting and amazing, amazing experience that I had there. Now I'm just measuring down the, the difference uh, between the concrete, like not alive, uh, not alive stuff, uh, compared to vegetation, alive stuff that absorb a lot of uh, radiation, and how higher he is compared to that. Now I'm going to approach you another piece of uh, uh, grass that it's uh, even higher than the um, radiation that we measure um, in front of the. Re uh, reaction for uh, reactor four. And here we are. You can see now I'm going to measure the radiation in this uh, very very few uh, grass. It's not a grass. I know. I don't remember now the word in English for this stuff. But it's really really high here in this uh, in this position. The radiation, like uh, twenty times or more, the natural radiation is stronger than radiation that, that I measured in front of the reactor 4. Uh, actually, um, unfortunately, I cannot show you the highest radiation I measured when I was there and it was very close to the bumper cars, the vegetation around the bumper cars. That was uh, like 40 times and it was really dangerous. I didn't want to spend so much time making a video when I, when I saw how, how strong was the radiation there. Though I don't know for how much longer it would be cause me problem. And that's basically the end of our trip. Here we are again in Chernobyl. As you can see, the radiation is very, very low here. It's so not a problem. It was really amazing trip. I really enjoyed it. I met a lot, a lot of pictures that uh, more than videos. I tried to document it uh, as much as possible this experience because for me it was, was really important. So I hope you enjoyed it too. See you next time and don't forget to subscribe. Bye bye.